So let's get into the nitty gritty of the nuclear option now. And I'm joined again by Dr. A.D. Patterson, who's the former CEO of ANSTO, the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation. Great to talk to you again, A.D. Good to see you, Chris. The cost issue. Now, it, it seems to me that Labor's throwing everything at the cost issue, but obviously nuclear power operates uh, affordably and reliably in France, UK, yep. Canada. We, we could go on. Um, what do you think the capital cost would be for seven installations we're talking about? Would it be under $100 billion? I think the capital cost is only known when the ban is lifted. You've got vendors across the world who will not spend the time and the resources to make a quote. However, what I can tell you is that we know everywhere in the world that the real cost is how long the grid is and how quality grid it is that you connect the generator to. And the problem we've got is we've still got the gen, uh, con, gen, gen cost report, which is the price of the fence. We're going to double the size of the grid. That will add cost to the grid. That, that's what will happen with the renewables. And that cost is 40 to 60% of the cost of electricity. So the CSIRO is getting the price wrong at the fence and pretending that's the whole cost. The uh, big poles and wires are um, going to be double the price uh, because they're going to double the size. And that last bit that gets to your house, that little bit of the wire that you see, is going to stay the same. Yeah, I'm all up for this debate about cost because uh, you've got to compare the pair. So yeah. to, to use the union super line. But, I mean, yeah. if, we, if, if we had a, a detailed cost analysis of what this renewables build-out will be, and as you say, that includes those transmission lines yeah. that all have to return a, a, a profit to shareholders, then you can compare apples with apples. So nuclear will be expensive in terms of the capital cost of the facilities, but you save on all that transmission, plus you don't have to overbuild it three times because it's there most of the time. Yeah. Well, wind is only available two days out of five on average. But we've even got an example of where it took too long and cost too much. I think it's an interesting example. It was in Finland. And what happened was that the Finnish plant, the new one that was turned on a few years ago, took too long and it cost too much. When they switched it on, the price of electricity went to 30% of what it had been before. Now, how's that possible? It's very simple. Quality, reliable, 98% time elect electrons yep. versus freezing wind turbines in Finland and breaking fin uh, wind turbines in Australia. There is no doubt, the, the scientific and engineering literature shows this, uh, the work of Riddell, uh, fantastic work. Uh, so if the published research, the experience of nations and the story not told by GenCost is our story, we're in for trouble. Look, we've got to get into this in detail. The, the opposition will release their costings, but I, I'm pretty comfortable about it because you look at what's happening in other countries and other countries wouldn't just be installing and, and maintaining their nuclear plans but in expanding them if it wasn't affordable for them. But we'll go through all that in detail as it comes out. The other, the other question is capacity. As the man who used to run Lucas Heights mm, and mm. train people and employ them in, in that industry... I took my boys out there to have a look at it the yeah. other day, actually. We were down that way. Fascinating uh, complex. Do we, how quickly could we build up the expertise here in order to build a couple? Obviously, it's going to be staggered, enough to build a, um, a decent installation and have actually homegrown people uh, running it and, and overseeing it. If we lift the ban, people will flood from other countries uh, to the quality of life in Australia. We'll be able to populate it. Uh, I'll just jump in there. That's exactly what you did, right? You were working it, in the nuclear industry in the UK and South Africa yeah. and migrated to Australia to run ANSTO. That, that's right. And the attraction of, of coming to ANSTO was the reactor had been built and we had to get it to work. It's now the world-class reactor that we have today. There's nothing wrong with the people. The people have come from all over the world. I think the big challenge we face, the one that really worries me, with the ban, we're creating a toxic environment and with the dilution of the grid, the price will go up. In fact, from the work that I've seen and the engineering work, we're at that little inflection curve where the early winds from renewables are over and it's only going to go north in terms of price from here. It's absolutely predictable. You shouldn't have little tent spreadsheets from, from GenCost. You need a decent um, computer to run this. But you can put a program into the computer that will predict how much more we will pay you won't find it in the, uh, the, the, the market um, operator. You won't find it in the market commission. 
Their sites are out of date. They've dated back to 2021. We haven't seen updates. You can't even get reliable information about the market. I think that we've really got to fix this. Number one, number one job, as you've been campaigning for and, and others for a long while, to get rid of that ban. Anthony Albanese said today it's going to stay in place. It strikes me as just take the politics out of it. It's just the dumbest thing to do, to have a ban in there when, when no one in the country, not even Labor, are saying this is an evil technology, we shouldn't deal in it. They say that their only argument against it is cost. Well, then get rid of the ban and then yeah. you'll see, as you say, what sort of proposals can come forward. Yeah. Well, we're, we're at the back of a queue, potentially. This is where we could lose time. There are 41 countries in the world that are queuing up to be new to nuclear countries. And we're an old to nuclear country in terms of having the best research reactor in the world. It's very happy to be involved with the team that developed that. Uh, and we've got denial and, and, and obfuscation. But most of all, we've got what I call energy fascism. The approach that the government is taking is to say, we are going to have a ban in place because we don't believe 41 other countries can do what we refuse to do. It's yep. a terrible, terrible, shocking situation. Energy fascism. They're saying it's renewables, 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 even though no one else is doing it. They're just so far down the path, they refuse to consider any other options. It's extraordinary to watch. I appreciate uh, your time again, AD. We'll look forward to catching up again. It's good to be here.